The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 10th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-877. 927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. We got the Dow trading down 107. The S&P's up three and a half. The Nasdaq's up 75. The Russell four. The semis are up 35. To the downside, it's the trend is up nine. Uh, New York Stock Exchange is off 31. Gold is down eight bucks. Silver's off 20 cents. Light speed crude is down 90 cents. Natural gas is off seven pennies. 30 Treasury up 29 ticks. She's printing out at 139.19. Now lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside. You got First Citizens Bank shares up 65 bucks, six percent. Mercado Libre, 57 bucks, 5%. Celsius Holdings up 23 bucks, 21%. Service Now up 13 bucks, 3%. To the downside, it's Axon Therapeutics off 38 bucks, 17%. Riata Pharmaceuticals, 25 or 22%. Airbnb, 15 bucks, 11%. Massimo Corporation down 13 or 7.5%. And Alta Beauty down 10 bucks. That's about a 2% move to the downside. So let's begin the day. Let's try to understand where we're at from a statistical standpoint. Let's take a look at the uh, breath data uh, brought to us by our folks over at Taz Market Profiles. We're looking at the NASDAQ 100 right now. We're bullish on the 6240 daily. We are just slightly bearish on the weekly, and the weekly's got 23 above and 25 below. So just a smidgen there, but that's a smidgen to say, okay, choppy market. Take a look at the S&P, a little bit more choppy. 60 is positive, 240 is positive. Daily and weekly are bearish out there. So we've got conditions that suggest that this choppiness and the sideways consolidation, that word should continue. How about in the shorter term time frame, Steve-O? Well, if we take a look at that, we can go to a 30-minute set of charts out here, or data, I should say. That 30-minute data for the uh, NQ shows 20 above, 45 below. Now let's take a look at the S&P 500. Maybe this has been positive territory. What do we have out here? We've got 121 above, 160 below. No, it's in bearish territory on uh, the 30. So we got choppy conditions out here from a market breast standpoint. We got consolidation patterns. Uh, when we take a look at the daily time frames, all we have to do is just simply come back and take a look at uh, this chart here, the market update chart. You can see I've drawn in a consolidation, the ES, the NQ, gold, silver, the U.S. dollar. And most certainly the 30 year treasury out there. So we got a chop fest that's going on, and we'll try to see if we can come up with any uh, any options for us to take a look at. If we go take a look at the equity futures charts out there, well, here's some equity future charts. You can see there's a new profile that's actually attempting to form this morning in, inside the NQ. Now, I don't know whether it will hold or not. I don't know, or I will not know until day's end, I meaning it's 6.01 this evening. But right now, you've got profile support at 13.222, the low today, 13.202, and resistance at 13.370. That's the top of that new daily profile. 
Uh, the ES Mini's got a profile that wraps around the prior one. So does its weekly wraps around the prior weekly profile. All that is uh, uh, signaling to you and I that we have a consolidating market that is going on. In the case of the uh, Dow Equity Future contract it remains below the bottom of its daily profile. Very easily could get down to test support at that 33, uh, 33 228 level. And if we take a look at the Russell 2000 experiencing resistance both at trend line and the bottom of its profile, really the center of its profile, 1789.31 is the price level that the Russell would need to close above to suggest that its moves are something other than a counter trend move. If we go down and dial down maybe some of the intraday charts, see if there's any kind of signals here to assist us with the market's intentions are, we begin with the NQ. Remember in the NQ, we had bullish conditions on the uh, 60, the 240, and the daily, bearish on the weekly, bearish on the 30-minute charts out there. Let's start with the 30-minute chart. 30-minute chart out here, now that TD9 count's not going to form, is it? No. So that's gone. So it does have, it shows wave number seven potential top. Yeah, I wouldn't even go with that one. Um, you've got a new profile. That price is trading within 13,298 is your support level. This is on a 30 minute basis at 13,433 is resistance. But do we see any real kind of patterns out here? And I'm gonna have to go with, no, not really. Not when I take a look at the uh, 30 minute uh, NQ charts. <laughs> Folks, I, I really don't have much for you out here. Uh, I'd love to. I mean, on the on the daily, I've got a rose momentum indicator top out here, price with inside the profile. We really kind of took a look at that, make sure we're on the white. We are. But from an intraday perspective, if we're looking for anything that's got any kind of consistency, I don't have it. I don't have it in the NQ. Let's go take, well, the only thing that I would have in the NQ, you don't have anything in the NQ. And that's where these markets get a little bit nuts, too. Here's the NQ. We'll just take a look at the daily time frame. And, uh, you know, yesterday was a one-hit wonder, a one-day pullback, at least at this stage of the game. Wouldn't be surprised to see us get a, a further pullback today and uh, finish off that two-bar, two to three-bar knee-jerk reaction um, move. But that's the NQ. When we move these charts over to the ES, so I'm going to do that here momentarily. Let's gonna take a moment for these to populate. Let's get those. I believe we are in day number – oops, that didn't work. I believe we're in day number three or four, e ES – 623. Um, to the downside, is that correct? No, we're not. We're not. What was it that I was looking at? Hmm. Must have been the Dow or the Russ. Must have been the Dow. Yeah, it was a Dow in the case of the Dow. So, well, anyways, let's take a look at the ES mini charts out here. In the case of the ES mini, do we have any other signals? Do I have any kind of bottom signal, any kind of topping signal other than what we have on the daily time frame? And the answer is these charts here populate as well as I don't. Don't see anything. I don't see any kind of pattern to be able to see. I'm coming back to where price broke out inside the ES Mini. We can see that breakout at about 9 o'clock this morning, 840, uh, 830 to 840. And price did pull back. We take a look at the ES Mini. But, and that's a part of a pattern. But it's not the one that you and I typically take a look at out here to help us identify tops and bottoms. So uh, this is only going to be yesterday was one day wonder to the downside. Wouldn't be surprised for the ES Mini to see a second day, second, maybe third day out here. That's a typical dance steps is a, at least a two or three day, sometimes four day pullbacks, and then a uh, rally that resumes for at least a couple of days out there, or it depends on whether we're in a downtrend or a, or an uptrend. That, that's a good question. Which trend are we in, steve -O? Well, you know what I can do here for a moment? Well, we got just a few seconds, and I do mean just a few seconds. We go back to those black background screens and go all the way over here. Here's the PTRs, horizontal trading ranges for the S&P. You can see it's actually inside a rising price channel now but it's trading with inside that this is the cash industry trading with inside that consolidation out there and that's the market that we're in and you see it can be choppy and frustrating but a consolidation is a consolidation stevie boy will be right back Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we went to that break. We were taking a look at the S&P 500. We were looking at its uh, primary trading ranges. Those were the vertical ones and its diagonal uh, price channels that are out there. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow chart. This is the weekly chart for Dow. So unlike the S&P that I showed you over here, where I said, hey, we're in a rising price channel there. And right now, just with inside a consolidation pattern out here, we take a look at the Dow. It's the exact opposite. We're still in a descending price channel. And that's the uh, red uh, vertical lines to the downside. We know that that uh, 34, 152 level is a very key level of resistance. There's been 13 instances where on a weekly basis we've had closes uh, at that uh, price point um, out there. So that's a, uh, that's a, we're trading, it's been trading into significant resistance. If I take a look at Goldilocks out here, and uh, so we take a look at gold, here's the horizontal. Uh, the red, those are on the monthly chart, by the way, that we're looking at right now. So you can see that 20, 26, 50 area, a real strong area of resistance. It's a basically where we're trading right now. You can see the vertical, the rising price channels, uh, both the yellow and the uh, green ones out there. And you can see uh, the green ones showing us a uh, that that that's a midpoint. That little dash point is a midpoint. So we can see the price is up against horizontal resistance at 2026, a vertical resistance level being a rising price channel, the midpoint of it. And then just above it is a, bar, uh, is a larger rising price channel out, out here. So gold has got its work cut out for it as we speak uh, right now. Will it be able to get through all of this? I don't know. I don't know out there. Um, uh, so uh, so that's what's going on with regard to uh, those charts. Let's get over to some of our questions that have uh, come in. The first one coming in from both SNP and Dano inside the Tiger's Den. They want to take a look at the GDX. So let's go switch over to the white background charts. In the case of uh, SNP, he's asking, where's an entry point? In the case of Dano, he's asking, will this get back up to its highs out there? So as we pull together these charts, here's sort of what we know. On a weekly basis, there's the potential, Dano, and uh, SNP, that we will get a TD9 count top. Now, in order for that to happen, the GDX must close above the close of bar number five. The close of bar number five is 3509. If price can close above 3509, 
that actually gets a little bit bearish because we would have a weekly TD9 count top. Now, what we don't have on the daily time frame yet is the bearish reversal candle to confirm a Roach Mintum indicator top. If, on the other hand, gold on a weekly basis closes below that closing price of bar number five, 3509, this pattern goes away. And then all you're dealing with here is profiles, profile resistance, which is dealing with right now at 3515, and then profile support, which would be between the range of 3230 and 3325. So really, SNP, the answer to your question may really rely upon not how this is trading today, but where price closes on Friday. And actually, Dano, that same thing might come into play out there. If you get a confirmed TD9 count top on a weekly basis, um, will we get back to the highs? I would say eventually yes. Will we, if, you, if you're talking about relatively soon, then the answer might be no, or at least there would be work to the downside. And so if we get that pattern, that TD9 count top, no idea that if we will, then my answer to you, GDX, would be your entry area would be between 32.30 and 33.25. If we were to get a bearish reversal candle or even a close below the current B point, which the candle says from just a few days ago, May 5th, that did volume of 22 million. Right now you're pulling back with 5.8 million. So we got about 6 million shares in three hours of trading. We multiply that times three just to kind of get a feel for what the end of day volume might be. That gets us to 18. We're pulling back with lighter volume. But a price did close below that low. That low is 34.52. That would set up an A to B equals CD to the downside. And then what I would say, uh, S&P, is your entry area would be around that A to B equals CD pattern when a bullish reversal candle would form. I would think the price target would be around 33.38. We can see on the uh, weekly or the monthly chart out there, the B point has been passed. The B point was from January 2023, 461 million shares traded. Well, that was passed last month with 436 million. So light volume there. And this month, it's way too early to even really know. I'm not going to do some kind of gauge. But there is an A to B equals CD pattern that gets us up to the 3827 level. So where are we on consecutive days lower? You know, maybe it was the GDX that I was looking at, and it wasn't the ES or the NQ or the YM. Here, we're going to be in day number four, it appears, of, of consecutive moves lower. So what we ought to see, and I don't want this to necessarily... You know, uh, so I'm, I'm giving with you, it's really almost more of a, well, we really need to take a look at Friday's uh, action. But on a daily basis, price is below that uh, oscillator and change line and the top of its profile. So that's suggesting a further pullback. But now we take a look at consecutive days lower. you got to expect a little bit of a bounce or rally uh, tomorrow. Does that mean it's a bottom? Look, it could be, but I don't have a pattern to suggest that. Um, so I hope that that uh, provides you with your both of your answers. So in the case, let me just resum resummarize. In the case of the GDX, we really need to understand what's going to happen on Friday to then be able to help us answer the question whether price is going to be able to get up to its recent highs or whether we're going to see a pullback into the 33.38-ish, 32.30-ish type level out there. And so that means I really can't answer that question today. But right now what I can share with you, what the signal to you and I is, is that price does want to move lower. It's below support out there. And if I look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here for the GDX, what do we see? We see what's open is uh, 3440 would be a, a price target for the uh, GDX. And that's using a 30 minute time frame. And that was his TD9 count breakout level. So I hope that helps you out about Dano and SNP. Thanks so much for the question. SNP had a second request. That was a take a look at on semiconductor. ON is the uh, ticker symbol out here. In the case of on semiconductor, it's got the possibility, SNP, if this can rally to form a TD9 count top. Uh, sometime by uh, Friday. So it needs to spike above, doesn't have to close above. It just needs to spike above, well, bar number eight. Yeah, it should be well, for bar number eight today. So it needs a couple of things. It would need a spike above. This would be by Friday. By Friday, it needs a spike above 81.72. By tomorrow, it needs a close above 81.22. If it doesn't get the close above 81.22 tomorrow, we don't have to worry about a TD9 count pattern. And the question would be, is this going to form an A to B equals CD? Well, the B point, the B point that should be chosen is the candle session. Well, the one that I would use is the one from May the 2nd. That had volume of 8.3 million shares. As price was moving up into it was with 7 million shares. That was that wide ranging bar. So you need to close above that high, that high again being 8138 to then trigger an A to B equal C to the upside. So I don't know if we have that pattern out here. You were asking 
I believe S&P wears an entry point. A pullback back to its green oscillator and change line would be that. You can see how price is trading above profiles here. So that would be your logical area of support there. Um, and you just got a consolidation inside the weekly. You've got a Rosemontum indicator top on the monthly, which has led to a consolidation with price above both the profile as well as its green oscillator. Its overall signal is neutral. Neutral weekly, consolidating. Neutral monthly, consolidating weekly. Bullish, really, on the uh, daily uh, time frame out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to on semiconductor SNP. Roger, inside the Tiger's Den, wants to take a look at ticker symbol AGCO. So let's get over to that chart out here. And, uh, Roger, I know you're looking for the next 30 days or so. Uh, this is struggling. This is really struggling. We take a look at the weekly and the monthly chart. Now, the weekly shows that price ran up to resistance this week, which was the oscillator change line. The same thing last week. Last week is below profiles. This is not really the message you want to see as a bullish message. That's coming from the weekly chart. The monthly chart, well, it's lost its momentum, but it's just consolidating. Quite a, rod, quite a uh, consolidation level. But between 89.25 and 158.62. Wow, sir. Steve Rhodes with TFN and we'll finish looking at AGCO as soon as we get back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for AGCO. That is Agco uh, Corporation. This is for Roger inside the uh, Tiger's Den. 
And as we take a look at these white background charts, uh, the best that I can share with you, because uh, it's you've just got consolidations basically going on. So that 129.97 is key level of resistance. You'll see on a 30 minute time frame chart, that's the weekly oscillator and change line. You'll see on the 30 minute time frame chart, it's 130.12. That was a real key resistance level. We had a TD9 count bottom, took price right up to the breakdown resistance area of 130.12. That's the level to be watching. If price can close above 130.12, well, that's going to tell us that price wants to get up to the top of that daily profile. And if not, well, then you know where resistance is at. You asked about the uh, seasonal charts out here for AGCO. You asked specifically about the last five years. Here's the last five years. The question is, do you want the uh, March 2020 data in there or not? So it's not in there. It's uh, This gets it taken out. This leaves it in. When we take a look at AGCO, uh, this suggests that this wants to move lower into the uh, uh, next week, about 10 days from now, move higher up into the uh, June time frame out there. But I, what I see is a consolidation out here in uh, ticker symbol AGCO. So I hope that helps you out, and thank you so much for the request. Next request coming in from McGuppy inside the Tiger's Den. McGuppy wants to take a look at BBAI. I guess this was out with earnings perhaps last night. Uh, what is it doing? Well, it's trading with inside its profile, sideways-ish type of a move. It's testing support right now. Let me actually get over to my other screens and see where BBAI is testing, is uh, trading. May not be trading at 273 because of a BBAI, a slight little data feed issue, I believe. But uh, 263 uh, is the uh, last uh, printout here. So it's trading below the bottom of its profile. Let's take a look at what it's doing from a volume standpoint. About 5.4 million shares. The last time we were down here, this was on the trading day of May 4th, was with 4 million shares. So this is pushing towards a swing point with volume, pushing into it. It's actually into it. It doesn't show on the white background chart. So I would say this, if uh, if a price of McGuppy closes below 264, and you're 262 right now, don't pay attention to white background charts, uh, odds favor you're going to go test that low, the low of that swing point from May the 4th. That low is out at the 239 level. And if price closes below, really it would be if price closes below 236, that will trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside. Where does that take us to? It would probably take us to the breakout level. So here would be, here would be, have we don't have that yet. And I'm just going to move this over to where the C point would be at this moment in time, should we get that pattern. And that would take us to, yeah, close to that uh, breakout level the TD9 count breakout level in about the uh, buck 57 area. That's not the pattern that is in play right now. 241 is also another level of support. You're consolidating between its oscillator and change line and the middle of its profile on the weekly base at 368 out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at BBA. Now, it did have three consecutive days to the upside. So we look at that out here. That would be kind of its normal dance steps. It's usually two. So, uh, McGuppy, we should not be surprised to see this pull back. And what we should be prepared for, it looks like, is a two to three to four bar type of uh, reversal out here. So that's what I see when I take a look at the chart patterns inside of BBAI. And I do hope that that uh, helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for the request. Dan, inside the Tiger's Den, he wanted to take a look at Vuzi. So let's go take a look at Vuzi out here, see what this is doing. Uh, Vuzi, um, I don't remember what Dan was asking for. Uh, here I've got the yearly chart. And we've got monthly, weekly, daily, and I've got some intraday panels. So we take a look at the daily chart. Beautiful looking uh, chart out here. Suggests that price wants to get up to its TD9 count breakdown level next, 483. Dan, if it can overcome that battle, then it gets back to the prior highs where there's a Roadsman indicator top. That could take us into about the 604-ish range out there. That's coming from our daily time frame. The weekly time frame chart for Vuzi shows us what? Well, let's open it up to find out. It shows us that price is trying to get back inside its profile level. So where a counter trend move would fail would be at the point price point of 493. So watch price as it gets up there, Dan. You'd love to see price close above that. If it do, 576 is in the cards. That's the top of the weekly profile. On a monthly basis, the monthly chart tells us that its oscillator and change line is where it should find resistance. That's also about the center of its profile. And that level there, Dan, is 544. So the daily says I want higher. I don't see anything about the weekly or the monthly that says it doesn't, but the weekly is dealing with those profile resistance levels. So 493, and then you've got that 544-ish level. So right around that 493 area where you're going to run into some pretty good resistance. Now, 
basically the 195 minute chart. There's 295 minute bars in a day. You are now in bar number nine. That says at day's end, on a 195 minute basis, Vuzi will complete a TD nine count top. Now, what should typically happen is price would pull back to test its oscillator and change line. That is currently printed at about 414. I see the 65 minute chart. Now this chart here is going to complete at, oh, let me see if I can give you that time. It's going to complete at uh, 1140. And at 1140, you're gonna have a completed TD nine count. So here's what I would be doing. I'd be watching that high. At present, and we've watched got four minutes to go, so I'm gonna assume this is gonna hold. That is at 475. If you see a close about 475 on a 65 minute basis out there, that tells us that this momentum continues. And then your next potential topping signal, Dan, would come from the 195 minute chart. And then you just watch that. If that high gets taken out, then that tells you we're continuing to head higher. And I'd say it's at 493 to 544 area. That would be the uh, range out there. So that's what we see when we take a look at Boozy. Dano, I hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for taking the time for the request. And folks, I would love more requests if you're inside the Tiger's Den. And of course, if you are just listening in and you would like to give us a call, 877-927-6648, or you can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. And uh, let's go to the next question, which is coming from Aaron. And Aaron wants to take a look at natural gas. So let's go take a look at the natural gas contract. Give me a moment. We'll get back to those charts out there. You're welcome, Dano. Oh, that was just Dan. We've got another Dano inside the Tiger's Den. So Aaron's question says, good morning, Steve. Can you please review natural gas? Thanks so much. We can. So when you take a look at these natural gas charts, the one pattern that you got to love out here is the uh, weekly pattern. It is completed at bar number nine. This week will be the bar following bar number nine. This will have a completed TD9 count pattern at the end of this week. Now, the issue has been that booger. That oscillator and change line, that red oscillator and change line that tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero on a weekly basis. Those are bearish conditions, but we got a bottom and we're trading below profile. So we go with the overall neutral signal that we have here. But boy, if price can overtake that oscillator and change line, close above it, then we got action. Now, now that action will only take us to 250 or 274 or basically 314 out there. That's what the weekly chart tells us. Monthly chart says, I don't know what bottom you're talking about on the weekly chart. That's what its message to you and I is, Aaron. The daily is waiting for a bullish reversal candle to confirm its road momentum indicator bottom. Uh, price is uh, still testing the center of its bullish structured profile. That's at about 219. As long as it can hold that level, that would be a beautiful thing. That's the area um, where you'd like to see support. And then I would suggest so what we would see here, in Aaron, is a move up to 242. So maybe today, now we have had three consecutive days to the upside. So let's take a look at those consecutive moves out there. And actually four consecutive days to the upside. Do we have four? Is that possible? Okay, three days. Huh. Well, this is a 10 minute chart. Jeez Louise, that's not the chart I was looking for. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. No wonder it didn't make sense to Stevie. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. The natural gas for Aaron, and uh, we have one other request. Take a look at natural gas. So what, what we can see here is there is a three-day move to the upside. Last time we had a three-day move to the upside, we had one move, one day move to the downside. Last time we had a, that, the, 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 the next time we had a two-day uh, move, we had a four-bar move to the downside. So I'd expect that we see natural gas bottom either today or tomorrow with the normal one to two day uh, pullback out here. But price is holding support at the uh, center of that bullish structured profile. So if you're looking to get into natural gas, you know, um, now may be a time uh, to uh, do that. So I hope that helps you out both Aaron and uh, there was another request I saw that came in by email out there. Roger wants to take a look at the Dow Diamonds. Why do you want to look at the Dow Diamonds, Roger? What we really would want to look at is the Dow Equity Future contract. I'll put up the Dow Diamonds out there, but they're not going to provide us with the type of information that this chart would so let's go put this chart up here first and that's the YM so uh, at least with regard to my chart work so during this show we're looking for patterns we're looking for patterns that help us identify tops or bottoms those patterns include the TD9 count they include the Rhodes momentum indicator they include the A to B equals CD pattern uh, they will take a look at uh, test of uh, swing points out there and so what we want is more information not less so I don't ask people to trade the future contracts. What I ask them to do is if you're going to trade the S&P or the NASDAQ or the Russell 2000 is get access to it and understand the patterns that are going on intraday and all different time frames out there. It will really assist you. Now, when we take a look at these Dow equity future contracts, they're not going to show us anything different than what we already looked at inside the ES and the NQ. We are in consolidating markets. We're not getting a lot of top and bottom signals here intraday. We do get them periodically. But as we speak right now, we got nothing. We got nothing, not a zilch. Now, what's really important for you to take into account is if we take a look at the left-hand panel chart here, you can see that prices struggle to get back inside that profile up at that 33. Well, let me give you the exact number out here. Up at the uh, 33,819 level. So if price can't get back up in there, it's telling us that, okay, you can't get it back up into a support area and you're dealing with resistance. And even though we have a higher high today than yesterday's candle, lower low than yesterday's candle, things in the Dow are still trending to the downside out here. And the issue with regard to the Dow equity future contract is the daily time frame doesn't have any other support other than all the way back down at the lows of March out here. 
Um, but I'll switch over and take a look at the Dow Diamonds. We'll take a look at the uh, Dow Diamond chart. They're coming up here momentarily. So here's the Dow Diamonds. Dow Diamonds show that we're trading right now below the bottom of its profile. It is trying to test. It hasn't tested it yet, but it's trying to test that. Oh, maybe it has. Let's see if it's tested this swing point. 3.5 million shares on the trading day of May 4th. And that high was 333.59. The low today is 333.64. Nope, it hasn't got down there. 1.5 million. We're maybe at about 4.5 million or so last time that we were down here. 3.5 million. So what this is telling us here, uh, Raj, is that price is moving lower and it's doing it with energy. It's doing it with more volume out there. And so if you close below 335.66 and you have not tested this swing point, even if you test it, it would say that you'd be back down there. So it looks like May 4th is where price is going to target inside the Dow Diamonds. But still, what I would do if I were you and you were trading the Dow, you're trading the diamonds out there, go get access to those uh, Dow equity future contracts and put on the short term time frames. And that will help you out immensely with regard to the uh, patterns that uh, at least that I share with you here. And uh, certainly the A to B equals CD pattern out there. So let's move on to our next request. That, uh, so thanks for the request there, Roger, and allowing me to uh, I give you some additional thoughts. Uh, Dan, I want you to take a look at KRE. That's that uh, banking uh, sector, regional banking sector out here. Uh, trading out, it looks like at about the 3707 mark. Let me just make sure where this is trading. That is uh, below profile, I believe. Yeah, 3708 was the last yet. So it's well below its profiles. Um, It actually has, believe it or not, it actually has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. And it confirmed that when it gapped to the upside on May the 5th. Now, what price is doing is testing support. But if price closes below this red oscillator change line, 37 even Stephen as we speak right now, the odds favor is going to go test that swing point. Now, that swing point for May 4th did volume of $117 million. You're only at $9.5 million today. And we've tested that high, I believe. The high of this swing is 37.05. The low today is 3681 so it closed above 3705 would be a test and rejection of that swing point with light volume but would you want to play it i don't know to answer your question uh there uh what you would be looking at this would be suggesting a bounce up to 40 if it does that it would be suggesting a bounce up to 4047 or 4132 nothing looks good on the weekly and on the monthly, price did pull back to test its breakout level of support, 35.17 out here. Is there anything else that Stevie's got for you? On a 30-minute chart, real quickly here with regard to the KRE, the uh, Spider S&P Regional Banking ETF, I really don't see a whole lot here that's going to assist both uh, you and I with regard to uh, this instrument. So it, you do have a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. You are testing a swing point with lighter volume. You are testing this oscillator and change line. If we get a test and rejection, then, my, then what I, I believe this is communicating to us that price wants to get up to go test the 4094 level. I take it back on the weekly chart. There is a TD nine count bottom pattern. I said there was no bottom. I was wrong on that. So it's got a bottom there, and you've got a bottom on the uh, daily time frame, and price pulled back to the support level on the monthly. You know, there might be something in here. There definitely might be something in here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Let's go on to the uh, next request out here, and that's from a guppy. You want to take a look at CFRX. Let's move over, take a look at uh, that set of charts out here. CFRX, that is, I'm going to go with this being some type of pharma stock, uh, Contrafect Corp. Don't know if it is or it isn't. But what I do know is what the heck is this thing? What is this? This has been trading at a buck sixty six. Is that the correct ticker symbol, McGuppy? You're looking for an entry here. Wow. I don't know that I can give you a whole lot. This has got no volume in it. Um what the heck? Yeah, this uh yes, it's correct. Okay. Uh I mean like for example, yesterday this did volume of what? 133,000 shares the day before 187 the day before 376 there is no volume this thing could be put in a dollar stock you yourself could push this around in a heartbeat in a heartbeat you're looking for an entry point I um I I'm, I'm stumped here I, I really don't I don't I don't have something that I can provide uh, to you. I mean, look, this thing certainly gapped up here. It, was, it formed a TD9 count bottom, so it most certainly did that. It completed that pattern on April the 14th. It gaps up with uh, what, for it, which is big volume, 120 million shares there. 
all it does is run into its second level of TD9 count breakdown resistance and just completely gives it up. So all those people, that 120 million, that group of people, right now they're saying, you know, I'll take my money back. I'll just please just get up to the top here. So I think with regard to that, this is this is a. The, you want a buy point a buck thirty nine. That would be its red oscillator and change line. But I'd be careful with this. I'd be careful with this stock. Not, not that I know anything about it, but um, you got a whole group. Just think. I know that was a sign of strength out there. Okay, and you had another sign of strength. Right, there's two signs of strength on this in on this instrument. The first one we took a look at on that wide ranging bar. I think the second one is right here as well. On April 27, 62 million shares. So you got 62 million shares there and 120 million shares here. How do you think those people are feeling about those entry points? You know, at three dollars, three ninety-five. And this is traded at buck sixty-nine and below profile. C Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. So you got still a mixed bag out here. You got the Dow off 90, S and P is up nine, Nasdaq 114 to the upside, Russell's up six, semis are up about 42 points as we speak. Let's just take a look at that market breadth. Let's stop in here, take a look at that market breadth real quickly. Uh, see if that's changed. Here's the S and P. This is negative for all four time frames as we speak right now, and the NQ is bullish for all four time frames. 
You want to talk about choppy market and mixed conditions out here? here? Here it is, right in front of our eyes, in front of our face. So what I would expect is these choppy conditions to continue. Real quickly, let's go take like a two requests that have come in here. One was for McDonald's. It's for ELO. McDonald's here has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And price is just trading with inside its profile. If we get a close below 295.05 ELO, you should see 290.37. You are going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count this week. So you could get a TD9 count pattern on a weekly base that completes um, between uh, this week and two weeks out from now. The monthly still looks very bullish out there. Uh, so uh, from a resistance standpoint, um, you know, you've got to uh, close above... 298.46 for this to really get its mojo back. Last chart, I believe, that we're going to go take a look at. This also requests from Duncan Steve wants to take a look at KOPN. We take a look at KOPN. We've got a bit of a consolidation with inside a daily profile, resists at 102 and support at 97 cents. You've got a wave number seven and TD9 count bottom on the weekly basis. But Duncan Price has been unable to get back inside that weekly profile. The real key level for you to see, watch, is 104. You would like to see two consecutive closes above that if you are along this position out there. And on a uh, daily time frame, I see a TD9 count bottom which is that sideways motion out here. The real resistance level on the uh, daily time frame, other than that 102 area, is going to be 117 out there. So, folks, we've got these choppy conditions. Real quickly, what's the 30-minute uh, uh, time frame uh, look like out here? Just what uh, we took a look at the other four. On a 30-minute time frame, we're bullish with regard to the S&P 500. Again, remember, the other uh, time frames were all negative. Inside the NQ, it's also bullish, 32 above, 26 below. Folks, stay tuned for great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there. Thanks for joining us.